So there we tracked a bunch of different industries like buildings and energy and um, transportation and looked at where the business opportunities are for uh, companies and cities to embrace a low carbon economy and profit from it. Energy efficiency, there's the thing called energy service company which is a type of business model where companies help organizations reduce their energy consumption in a building and, and instead of charging the client for the cost of consulting and the implementation, they charge the client over a period of years for the um, energy savings. So they take a percentage of the energy savings till they get their return back. And you look at anything, so electric vehicles and um, the renewable energy space and greener buildings, so all of those things were discussed at length in the book. Well, I think one easy way to do is to talk about s smart cities, which is uh, a term that a lot of people use but don't really know what it means. But to me, it's a, a city being more innovative. It's innovative in everything it does. It can be innovative in how it uh, manages its relationship with citizens, but it can also be innovative in encouraging uh, an entrepreneurial economy in their community. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of things around cities being smarter that also means being more efficient and more energy uh, uh, responsible, as well as promoting the adoption of electric vehicles, better public transit, uh, more efficient public transit, um, and better building stock uh, so that the city is more efficient in how it runs. And even the things like um, sharing economy, car sharing, bike sharing, which are often started by entrepreneurs and supported by cities with uh, access to parking spaces. Those are types of examples. Well, I think an urban entrepreneur is somebody that actually is leveraging the fabric of the city to uh, to create a business model that works. So some of those urban entrepreneurs are very city-centric, so they're trying to solve civic problems in cities. So they're worried about traffic problems, they're worried about air contamination, they're worried about uh, energy provision, and so they try to find solutions in their city. So that's one type of urban entrepreneur I call civic entrepreneur. But there are other types of urban entrepreneurs that are just benefiting from the density and diversity that they can find in a city uh, to do projects in real time like these on-demand entrepreneurs that leverage the fact that there's all these people in a city needing things in real time and some people have certain skills they can actually deliver in real time and they can make the decision in real time if they want to take that project or not. So they're leveraging the density and the demand of a city to create a business opportunity. Well, the one challenge is the, the loss of the innovators to cities that already are doing better. So we talked about that in a few of the sessions today already, which is the fact that increasingly citizens are more mobile. And if they don't like their city for any reason, they'll find a city that's more attractive to them and they'll migrate there. So that's the biggest challenge is keeping and retaining those people. So then the question is how do you attract and retain entrepreneurs and innovators in your city. Richard Florida has a long uh, history of talking about the creative class and that cities that are tolerant have a lot of technology and embrace diversity are the ones that are going to be uh, more attractive to the innovators of the future and there's a lot of truth to that. Today I think there's also a lot of things cities can do to support attracting entrepreneurs beyond that which are things like um, the creation of innovation districts which I mentioned like Barcelona has. Um, such as doing programs around procurement for innovation so that some of the procurement budget from the city is actually geared towards trying to give opportunities to local entrepreneurs. So there's a lot of cool things that cities can do. Also they can support the growth of co-working spaces, fab labs for 3D printing. Those are the things that make a city kind of sexy for an innovator or entrepreneur but also are resources that are very valuable to innovators and entrepreneurs. Rare Repair Cafe is a non economic model of supporting sharing in a community by having one person with the idea of getting people together who have either a, something broken in their house or people who are good at fixing things. And, and the idea emerged from the recognition a lot of people just leave these things in their house that are broken and they never fix them and sooner or later they end up throwing them out and they go to a landfill. So rather than doing that, why not create community building around this too and bring people who like to fix things with people who need things fixed together uh, once a month in a, in a relaxed coffee environment and they fix stuff and no money changes hands. The people just do it because they like to fix stuff and they also like to be part of the community. And now there's a few hundred repair cafes around the world. I think the sharing cities space is really important uh, and it's emerging. Here in Europe we have Amsterdam is, is emerging as the leader in the region of trying to promote the adoption of the sharing economy both through uh, city-led initiatives as well as uh, non-profits. There's a group called Share NL for Share Netherlands that's really proactive in trying to get actors together, support the growth of the sharing economy. And I think cities and innovators need to be looking towards the sharing city space as a really important um, innovation opportunity for the future.